I'm a storyteller, and so are many of you. And the story of these film credits is a true little engine that could tell. They began as an idea in a small group meetings over coffee and sandwiches. They grew into proposals, testimonies, and finally a written law. They were fueled, as all good stories are, with passion, a growing list of characters, and an expanding plot with exciting twists and turns. And then in a single speech last Thursday, the story was halted, and the book was thrown dangerously close to the fire. Well, we are here to save the story. This is not about saving Hollywood. This is about saving Michigan. If we dissolve into hate, we have lost not just this fight, but our dignity. This cannot then break into Republican versus Democratic name-calling. It cannot be a liberal conservative thing. That way lies madness and worse defeat. This is not a way for Michigan celebrities to get rich. Let me tell you one, and I only include one personal story in this, these remarks that breaks my heart. I'm in conversations, negotiations now for a film of a book that I wrote that's very dear to my heart called Have a Little Faith. And it is about a Detroit pastor. It's about a Detroit pastor in a Detroit church. And when they told me they wanted to make it, I said, well, please come to Detroit to talk to me because I want you to see this church. And they flew in and they sat in this rundown church in downtown Detroit that once had a hole in its roof where snow used to come in. And they sat there and were so moved by it that by the end of the day, they agreed with me. They said, okay, we'll make it all here in Detroit. We'll use this church. We'll film the homeless people that come in here and actually have to sleep here. We'll tell the story of the church. And I was overjoyed because I knew that the attention that would get, the money that they would spend, might actually help save this church. And the contract arrived via email a few days before the governor's speech. And with a little codicil on a the line there, it said, we agreed to film this production entirely in Detroit. And then there was a parenthesis. And it said, unless the tax incentives are changed. Well, the truth is, if this goes through, they'll make a movie about a Detroit pastor and a beautiful Detroit church in Toronto or Vancouver or Louisiana and another opportunity to build pride for our state and tell stories in our state and give jobs to our state will be lost. And no film, no TV, no video business is going to come to a state that sets a table one year and yanks the tablecloth out from underneath it the next. We already look like fools, having set up the best program for this in the country, and three years later, telling everybody we're closing down. Because we have a chance to paint our state, to create the image of this beautiful place that we live in. So do not give up on this. Contact your legislators. Sign all these clipboards. You are fighting as important a fight as any auto worker or healthcare worker in Michigan. You are fighting for jobs, incomes, young minds, and the chance to do what we all want to do. Stay in our beloved state of Michigan and still prosper. In the story world, they call that a happy ending. And I pray, despite this lightest bump in the road, that we'll all be able to celebrate that happy ending by pulling together. Thanks very much. showing up tonight and for you know this is a really sad night and I have to tell you you know I haven't made a movie yet here with the film plans I, I've spent three years trying to get my movie financed so I, I just haven't made it a lot of people think it's the title I personally think with me fuck me suck me kill me is a good title for a Disney film but I have not found financing but many of my friends have, and they come back and they say some really beautiful things about you guys. They really do, you know, and they're not talking about incentives, they're talking about crews and a work ethic 
and great people and a great place to work. And they're sincere. I remember when years ago, I, I, I've already been doing this 30 years, I remember years ago I, I would come up with a movie and I would, I would call the film commission, it was like Janet, she was like the Maytag repairman, she was like this lonely lady in a room. And I'd come to her with this TV series I was going to do, this, you know, it's all set in Detroit, and then eventually we'd shoot it in Chicago when it was shot in Chicago. And I'd go to the network or the studio, wherever, and they'd say, there's... You don't have the infrastructure there. You don't have the whatever. And that was the story of my life. I made a movie called The Upside of Anger with Kevin Costner and Joe Mann. It's set in Bloomfield Hills. I shot it on a soundstage in London and shot here for, uh, for three days, second year. It broke my heart. It broke my heart. It's not what I wanted to do. But the people, Mitch is right. I don't get paid any different, not one penny different. But the people that finance these things, they go, hey, it's called a long day in Connecticut, baby. You know, that's, we're going to Connecticut with this one. That's, these are not tax credits to build a new wing of government that will forever be here. This is not a department of film. This is tax incentives to incentivize an industry and build small businesses. That's what you people have done in such a brilliant way. And it, everything that was promised has happened only better. Yeah. When the studios came, the actors came, they built a world-class studio in Pontiac, uh, in Raleigh Studios, they built studios in Livonia. That every, there's an ABC TV series shot here. There's an HBO series shot here. Clint Eastwood made a hit movie here. DreamWorks just did an $80 million movie here. Not only did we go up the hill, we were crested, baby. We were Sam Raimi, another Michigan guy, was gonna do a he's gonna do a big movie here this summer. We had the Avengers coming here. We were on a roll. We were cooking with gas. Okay, so if you say why, I, I don't, you know, I don't want to pick one industry. You can't pick one industry when one of them is working. You have to stick with the winners. Okay, this was working. And, and then, again, this was a tax percent. So there's a lot of speakers tonight. So I'm going to just say this is my opinion. I'm not a legislator. I, I personally think. You people need to call your legislators and really bug the hell out of them. Because it's an uphill fight. I'm, from being a guy out there and talking to a studio that's about to make a movie here and hearing the way they went at Michigan's closing shop, you guys got an uphill fight. You know, I don't mean to be discouraging, but if, if it's going to happen, it's because you were loud and you made a lot of noise. And, Thanks, Mike. I'll build quick some little notes that should be pointed out that this is going on. And Bill Mechanic said, I'll tell you one thing that I would not advise you to do. I would not advise you to leave Michigan and go to Los Angeles to look for work. All of the work is coming here. I would advise you to stay here. With the change in this law, the opportunity to grow this program, and Jim and I have been out pounding the pavement to try to find financial support to continue this program. With the change in this law, this program will go away. It won't happen. And the students who have benefited so much from it will go away as well, as we all know. Wait, are any of you here? Are there any students who are here there's some hands up back there. Here we are. Stand up. All of you, please stand up. All of you who are part of this degree are coming up. Look for our uh, Michigan Film Office Advisory Council meeting. Take note of everybody and the fine work they've done, and we're here to help in any way we can. Thank you very much.
and, and there is really something I want to say, and I know that we try to keep the debate uh, cultural, but I'm pissed off. <laughs> Governor Snyder, why I'm pissed off. I am not pissed off because 14 months ago I went to meet Treasury and the Film Commission to make sure that the tax credit was solid and they told me it was. I'm not pissed off because we invested 1.6 million dollars in Livonia. I'm from Marseille, next to Monte Carlo and Cannes. <laughs> so I'm not even pissed off for that. Because I've read somewhere that the governor said that producers and Hollywood will go. He's right. If the tax break is killed, producers, studios will go away. So our company will have, will have lost 1.6 million dollars. Fine. Let me tell you why I'm pissed off. <laughs> I'm pissed off because I came here with a screenplay a year ago, and we were going to do a CGI movie, you know, like 300 and Sin City. And the idea was to bring most of the artists from LA and from Europe. Exactly one year ago. I met a young writer that gave me an idea of a script. She's from Michigan, she never wrote a screenplay before. And her idea was better than mine. In the last year, we hired 50 people, all from Michigan. Governor Snyder, all Michigan taxpayers. Now let me tell you something, before I started Maxar and created a CGI company here, I spent two years traveling to Israel, India, Eastern Europe, China, to look for artists, people that were good. I went to Los Angeles, of course. And the amazing thing is that one by one, we found people here that had amazing talent. hiring and convincing French investors, UK investors, Florida investors that the people here are more, had more talent than the people that I was going to bring from all over the world. Because I'm not here to fight for the building that we put up the money, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm really sorry for the guys at Real Studio thinking of how many millions they put in the studio. I'm here to fight for the 50 Michigan artists that are permanent employees in my studio and for the 50 that I want to hire more. Because right now, the Film Commission is not certifying any films. So if that film gets lost in bureaucracy for three or four months, how many people here can afford not to have an income for the next four or five months? So things have to happen, and they have to happen fast, and you know what? You guys fight, and I'll be right there with you. Thank you.
am very honored to uh, have been asked to be a part of this. Thank you, Kenny. Thank you, Mitch. And as someone who's been shooting movies everywhere except Hollywood since the late 80s, I got so sick and tired of working with all due respect, Canadian crews, Canadian actors, Toronto, Winnipeg, Vancouver, multiple times, Louisiana, Texas, Connecticut, Pennsylvania. Why aren't those jobs here? And when they put through this tax incentive, it was a great day. And as Mitch said, rightly so, not for me. I didn't make a dime. Much like the Purple Rose Theater Company, that was created for a lot of reasons, one of which was for that 21-year-old kid I used to be. And now that 21-year-old kid, many of them who are right here, who I know, have an opportunity that I didn't have. So I like George Clooney, I like Clint Eastwood, uh, but I don't really care about them. What I care about are the people that George Clooney and Clint Eastwood hired. that are affected financially by those movies being in the area. For instance, my brother has a lumber company. And if you've been paying attention at all, there are lumber companies closing all over America and yes, inside the state of Michigan, left, right, and sideways. How my dad and brother kept their two little lumber companies open, I have no idea. But they did. And my brother's lumber company is in Bridgewater, Michigan. And when the incentive came in, Drew Barrymore was one of the first movies into Ann Arbor. And she looked around and she needed lumber. So she found a close lumber company. So before you jump, you know, I didn't have anything to do with it. It happened to be within, you know, it was close. And they didn't ask how much a piece of plywood was. They asked, how fast can you get it here? Can you have it by Tuesday at night? And so he did that. And then he delivered, and they paid him, and they left. And Rob Reiner came in, he asked Drew Barrymore's people, where'd you get your lumber? And not, how much was it? Did it come, and did you get it on time? They said yes. And there were four or five movies after that. He said it brought in $200,000 worth of business.
There's money. That's bullshit. And I was ready to, he called the meeting on December 9th. He wanted to talk to me about the tax incentive at his request. I was honored that he asked. Uh, there are guys here who know the numbers far better, better than I do. So I was there just to basically be an open. And some of the stuff I've already told you, I told him. Before I even sat down, he said, I don't want to kill it. Now, I'm an actor. One of the tools of my trade <laughs> is to remember things. <laughs> and that's accurate. I told him about the lumberyard. I told him about the teamster. I told him, and you know what? He goes, I know, I know, I know. He recognized it. I was sitting with a guy was going to be governor, who cared? He gave me the impression he cared, he understood, and that he got it. He, he wanted to talk about a reduction, about a cap. He made me, he we said no numbers. He made no commitments to me. I didn't say he did. But we ended our meeting. And I thought, I felt like I was preaching to the choir. And the last thing he said to me was, and it's not just my decision. I said, oh, okay. I felt pretty good about it. I went to people and said, I think it's going to be all right. And then he went to Lansing and did what he did. So I'm accurate when I said that I felt like I was talking to a politician. He said one thing, I don't want to kill it. Then he went to Lansing and said 25 million. And then he did kill it. He said one thing, did another. So I'm accurate. So don't tell me I'm not. The guy I met with, as I said, cares. The guy I met with gets it. The guy I met with, I think, wants to move on this issue. It is up to you. We can only do so much. We can only stand here. The cameras will only come once or twice. It's up to you people. Every one of you people has got to get on the ass of your representative in Lansing. You've got to do the due diligence. You've got to get in there. You've got to email. You've got to call them. You've got to find out who it is. You've got to do all that heavy lifting or this thing's going to go away. It is up to you to hound them, to let them have it. Because I believe that if the legislature decides that this is worth keeping, they'll go to the governor and they're going to find a governor. I think, I hope, the governor that I sat with, the one who cares, the one who gets it, the one who understands, the one who truly knows a good business when he sees one. Thank you.
in Michigan. And we are now watching that dream disappear. We are contemplating if we will have to move from our beloved home state in order to make a living. We are telling you our story, not so you can know us, but so you can know the possibilities for upcoming graduates and other young people in this state if the incentives are kept alive. Let's work it out, not throw it out. that um, Michigan has it over on some other production areas around the state that have uh, enacted incentives. We have always been a production center. For over 50 years, we've been making different kinds of productions, training crews, and building infrastructure. Um, Iowa and New Mexico have incentives, but you can see, as Mitch said long ago, you can see from miles and miles. You can see you're talking about Miles. There's not a lot out there. We have it all right here. I mentioned that I've seen my name in credits for a while, and I've got to give out credits. We haven't mentioned that. There are a lot of people here that put out lots of time to make this evening happen the way it's happened. Uh, we are streaming this video across the state, across the country really, on the Facebook page the Michigan Production Alliance has. Thank you very much, our friends from Grand Rapids. Good to see you guys. Hi there. Hi there. I want to give kudos to Galen Chandler, Patrick Witt, Shannon Tucker, Michael Koontz, Frank Biondo. These guys are great. These are the technicians that are behind the scenes, just like we always are. They do this thing together. We are going to be in a mass group very soon. Very soon, we have called for a permit, we have a permit to rally at the Capitol. <laughs> Sounds like we're ready to do that. We're fired up. That's great. Uh, the date will be Tuesday, March 22nd. You think you can be there? Michigan Production Complex is going to be working with us in coordinating this effort. Andy Keeble is working very hard to make sure, I think we've got postcards, so there will be a committee meeting about that tomorrow night. We'd like you to all join us at that time on the East Steps. Information will be had very soon on our social networks and on our uh, Production Alliance pages. It will be called No Curtain Call on Our Spotlight. No Curtain Call on Our Spotlight. Going. I really appreciate your time today. Thank you very much for coming. So if you believe we should keep the Michigan Film Incentive, then this needs to be your Bible. And if you believe that you're an army of people in this industry who can change opinions in Lansing, and this is your ammunition. These are facts. So that's 84.7 million. That 84.7 million, compared to the economic impact, comes out to $5.94 for every dollar spent on the Michigan Film Center. I will tell you that the Treasury Department reviewed this. The MEDC reviewed this. The governor's staff reviewed it. They all said it was done properly with appropriate um, controls. This isn't any BS. These are the real numbers, the real figures, the real economic impact. And I think other industries have to take a look and say, this is the way we treat the film industry, which we invited here two and a half years ago. How are we going to treat your industry? It sends a bad message now. Brown Studios and the commitment that all of its partners have made to Michigan's growth of this diverse economy and its job growth will continue to be strong and will continue even under these circumstances. We are committed. We're a hundred million dollars committed. Oh my God. Our, our group and all of us here have a significant investment in the building of the future of the state of Michigan. We need 
We need to remind certain people that the plan and the vision of bringing a new industry to Michigan was not that of just one person, of one governor, of one CEO. It really was the plan of a group of people. People sitting here tonight, many of us and our legislators, who all voted almost unanimously to proceed with a strategy to foster entrepreneurship, to build an infrastructure, to build of the state's economy. The plan enacted just over a couple of years ago has proven to be a really good plan. We've heard tonight that we've, we have job growth, we've begun a new industry, and we're on the verge of opening, as Ken said, a new state-of-the-art facility in the state of Michigan. We've demonstrated to the nation that we have a first-class workforce that we the people have shown the commitment to this plan, proving to the legislatures that believed in us, and we showed to them that they were right to do so. So Lansing, don't stop the plan. Don't make our jobs go away. We're just about to prove you right one more time. As Raleigh, Michigan Studios is about to open. We're ready to open and we will open. We prove Whatever, whatever it is, whether it's made in Michigan, whether it's imported from Michigan, or whatever we want to use as a slogan, what we really need right now is committed to Michigan. We need our representatives committed to the, to the plan that was working so we, as citizens of Michigan, can keep on working. Thank you. So uh, yeah, my name is Nathaniel. I'm the owner of Scientific Improvement Entertainment. We're an interactive film from the Farmington Hills. Uh, just a little brief history about myself. I grew up in New York. Uh, I spent the last 10 years in Los Angeles making video games. Within a few months of learning about the incentives in 2009, I packed up my family, left my alley based company that I created, and bought a home here. I opened Scientific Improvement. I opened Scientific Improvement in January 2010. One year we have spent, or we spent a lot of money, uh, created many full-time jobs and established some incredible relationships. For example, we are now the proud sponsors of the Michigan State University Capstone Program for Video Game Design, and we have teamed up with local school districts, <coughs> excuse me, local school districts to develop new engaging interactive ways to stimulate and incentivize children to achieve better grades. We employ a cross-representation of almost every major university in the state. Based on the people I've met, talent that has surfaced, and heart that has been shown, I'm incredibly proud to say that I'm now Michigan. With this legislation in place, not only do filmmakers and all the businesses associated directly and indirectly benefit, but all creative technology, creative and technology industries can as well. The law incentivizes all of the following. Film, television, interactive television, music videos, interactive games, video games, internet programming, digital animation, and interactive websites. As you can see, the majority of the incentivized programs deal with high-paying, full-time, permit resident, highly skilled jobs. And the next video game developed in Farmington Hills will provide the foundation for a new way to teach children mathematics and science. It's one thing to do this for one night, it's another thing to keep going the next couple months to get this change. You'll do that by joining together, meet one another, and form this community. Thank you to all the speakers who came out, to Kenny who helped put this together for the last night. Good night, drive home safely.